So I've just spent two whole days on my stream at twitch.tv slash farfa where you can check out my recent Master Duel gameplay and drop me a follow. I've been playing this game a lot and I've spent a lot of goddamn money and I'm here to tell you what my first impressions are of the game. As a review overall, I'd say this game has been absolutely incredible. The animations are beautiful, the aesthetics, the futuristic look, the music, the feel of the game is incredible and nothing like we've ever seen before for Yu-Gi-Oh! the trading card game and it's been an absolute breath of fresh air. Now, of course, it isn't perfect, and I'm going to break down some of the critiques that I have of the game, as well as talk about a lot of the things that I love and think that they should really expand upon and improve upon. Now, like I said, the animations and the graphics, etc., are just phenomenal and beautiful, but sometimes even when you use the settings to turn down the options of these overly bombastic flashes and animations, it can sometimes still feel a little bit overwhelming, especially if you might not be so comfortable with this sort of sensory overload, or maybe if you're just really focusing hard on an ultra high-end competitive game. But again, it can't be understated just how beautiful and amazingly gorgeous the game looks right now. The interface is something that is a massive step up from all of the previous games we've seen before. Some of you might remember uh, some of the older video games or recent video games, and one of the most uh, popular ones that is played until today is Duel Links, which uh, if you are familiar with that, you'll know sometimes that game can have an absurd amount of input requirements to really bring out uh, the vision that you have for the play that you're making with all of the constant, do you want to use this? Do you want to use that? Do you want to use this? Even in response to each and every single one of your card effects. Let me give you a practical example. A card, Tri Brigade Revolt, that is in the game. Uh, this card specifically requires 34 inputs from the user to fully realize the card effect. That's right. That means you're going to have to activate the card, click confirm, select each individual monster, confirm each of those individual monsters, select the battle positions of each of those individual monsters, Monsters. Most of those things I just mentioned aren't even important because you're going to link them away instantly into a monster anyway. Now, I don't know what the solution for that is, and I guess they are important in an ultra competitive environment, but I think there must be some way to just make this a little bit more fluid, maybe adding a little bit more click and drag there, or maybe rather than just confirming each individual monster, you can click and confirm all of the monsters and then confirm all of them at once. Something like that I think would really help the game because right now there is the only real option to avoid so many constant prompts for each of your cards artifacts, if you play hand traps, is basically using toggle off, which might potentially risk resulting in you missing important card effects, and no one wants to be sitting constantly going between on and off, especially when there doesn't seem to be a key bind for this that I think could really just work. I mean, you used to be able to press and hold down the letter A on your keyboard in other games, and I don't think there's anything similar in this game at all to that effect. The deck building tool is nice. You create your deck, you select all the cards you want there, and then you can go forward and decide what you would like to make and what you would like to put in your deck. It's very seamless, it's very easy, and I think for the most part, it's overall quite good. My only qualm that I've really had with the deck building is sometimes the filtering system feels very lackluster and extremely clunky when you filter cards that you're looking for. Generally, you can search by card effects in other games. In this one, you can do all of that, but it requires so much more input in the filter menu where you're going to have to go through each individual level, the attribute, the monster type, and all of these different things. And then removing that also requires, I think, three more inputs in clicking the trash can, confirming, and then going back to that menu to find the cards that you actually want to run. Overall, I think that the biggest issue with the interface, I feel, has been large amount of input required from the user. Now, I know some people might be watching and thinking like, oh, that's just really nitpicking and bias. Haha, <laughs> bye bye. But it is a bit of a frustrating experience, and it's something that is important from a game design perspective, is that when you have a vision in your mind as a player as to just simply picking a card to put in your deck, it is important to minimize those inputs as much as possible. And I think sometimes the game can have a real unnecessarily bloated amount of those. The gameplay modes themselves are pretty great. I think for story mode and tutorial, they work quite well in what they are just supposed to and designed to achieve. Story mode, I think, could maybe do with a little bit more. Um, we do have nice graphics graphics and lore and music that plays. I don't see why maybe they couldn't have included some voice acting, some different game modes I think would really benefit the game, some sort of draft mode, some sort of maybe a kind of PvE player versus environment mode that wasn't just basically a glorified tutorial. Maybe you could play against a certain boss monster who started the duel with a large array of different monsters from the anime and then you get like, you know, one card to start your game with or just some sort of like random thing like that to just really spice up the story mode because like I said the story mode does just feel like some way to basically grind gems and do a glorified tutorial. As for the competitive aspect the ranked ladder mode is sitting at a best of one weird 
OCG mostly and a little bit of TCG amalgamated format in terms of its card pool, which is very exciting as a TCG player because we have seen and are able to play with cards we've never had before in the West, or at least haven't had in a long time, like that grass looks greener. <laughs> There's VFD as well if you're into that, as well as Skill Drain at three. That's a completely different and whole new format. And I think that the game could benefit from having multiple ladders rather than just one. I don't really see why it would be a bad thing to incorporate a standard best of one as it is currently but also potentially add in a standard best of three or maybe even a TCG standard and best of three modes. I suppose maybe from their perspective, they don't want to split the player base too much. And for new players, it can be very confusing. Like what is this OCG? What is this TCG? But I think in order to keep the game fresh and give it the longevity that it deserves, I think they're going to have to try and update and spice things up with multiple game modes as something like that, just to make sure that we aren't sort of playing this kind of very dice roll format. The rooms are overall quite good, but that's really all you're getting. You aren't really getting anything too intuitive. I would like to see a really sort of elaborated upon tournament mode that allows you to basically bring people in and then actually have a structure in place that allows you to know who is playing against who and then what the next round is and who is playing against who there and then go and progress to an eventual winner. Let's talk a little bit about the crafting. It is overall extremely positive from people that I've played with and talked to over the last couple of days from very ultra competitive whales all the way to very competitive free to play players. Both have said that the game is extremely easily accessible when either way you decide to play. You're obviously not going to get as many options if you're free to play, but there are so many ways to grind and the generosity of the crafting system with the one to three ratio of ultras to supers, I think is extremely great. The way the pack opening works now is that you pull from one single pack that has all of the cards in the game. And then you have a secondary pack that has all of the sort of meta relevant defining cards in the game. You get packs from those and then they can further unlock secret packs, which is a specialized and sort of a centralized pack that has cards that belong to your theme. Now that's great because then you can center in with your gems and decide to go, okay, I'm going to go all in on Burning Abyss or Infernoid or whatever it is that you're looking for and try and get cards from those packs. Now you're not going to get all of the ultras and supers that you want immediately because you might get ones from a totally different archetype that also happens to share the same theme, so to say. So it isn't completely centralized that way. But because of the crafting and dismantling system that you have, you are able to put together cards that you need quite easily. Now the issue that I have with these secret packs is that I think they're great overall. I think they're amazing and they work really well, but I don't understand the time gating. I don't know why there's a 24 hour cap on there. I feel like that just seems completely unnecessary, not really beneficial to gameplay. I guess it can't really be understated as any other thing other than a way to make you spend money, which is understandable because business and gacha game or whatever. But at the same time, I feel like 24 hours is not very generous at all. Overall, my thoughts is that Mastodo is an extremely great fundamental and base structure to play and go forward with. There are things for new players and competitive players alike to enjoy in the game. And I think for the most part, people will find a very refreshing experience and definitely something to sink your time into at least for a couple of weeks. Now, again, it's important. I really hope that they make sure that the game is staying fresh with some updates, especially to the card pool as we don't have the latest sets, but also maybe with some alternative formats and other game modes. These are things that have been announced in the TCG and are coming to real life play, but I think something like retro formats, alternative formats, traditional formats, best of threes, the whole like expansion of the game is completely sort of limited by best of one because there's just so many good cards in the game, but don't really feel relevant if you're trying to basically only just play on ladder. I think something like draft would be really beneficial. And really the world is your oyster at that point. They can come up with all kinds of game modes to keep players entertained because as it is right now, the game is extremely fresh and fun and amazing at this point. But one week from now, two weeks from now, I can see a lot of drop off. So I really hope they keep things fresh and I'm really excited to see where this goes. I think right now, if I was to give an arbitrary number, I'd say we're sitting at about a solid seven out of 10. Um, and I think with some of the interface changes and game modes that I've suggested would probably definitely boost this up to like an easy nine. So overall, great, and I'm super happy to see where Mastodo goes in the future. Remember, if you do want to check out more of my content, hit the subscribe button, and also make sure you follow me on Twitch to check out the live gameplay daily. Peace!